What's up YouTube, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you about the spring joint 2D component. As the name suggests, this joint behaves like a spring. It aims to keep a linear distance between two points. Those two points can be two rigid body 2D components or a rigid body 2D component and a point in world space. So let's begin. We're going to start by doing some level design. Click game object, 3D object quad, remove the mesh collider from it, add a box collider 2D instead and bring this quad up here. Make a duplicate of the quad. This is going to be our ground. There's no need to name the object, just resize it so that we can use it as ground. Make a duplicate of this quad, rotate it on the Z axis and move it to the left side. We're going to use this as our left wall and make a duplicate of this wall and drag it to the right side. This is going to be our right side wall. Make a duplicate of the original quad and bring it over here and resize it on the X axis and rename this object to block. Also add a rigid body 2D component to it and check is kinematic. Make another duplicate of the original quad, bring it over here and add a rigid body 2D component to this and make sure the position on the X axis is zero. Do the same for the block as well and rename this object to spring block because this block will contain our spring joint 2D. Make another duplicate of the original quad and rename this to player. Of course, this is going to be our player object. Add a rigid body 2D component to this object as well and set the gravity scale to 9.8. Now select the spring block object and add a spring joint 2D component to it. Leave all the properties at their default values and select the player object and add a new script. We're going to call this player move script of and open it up in mono develop. All right, so this is going to be a really simple script public float move force, public float jump force, and private rigid body 2D, our body 2D. In the start method, our body 2D equals get component rigid body 2D. We're basically adding a reference to the rigid body 2D component of this game object. Then in the update method, float h equals input dot get access raw horizontal because we want the value on the horizontal axis and then multiply that by move force. Next, our body 2D dot add force vector 2 dot right multiplied by h. Next, if input dot get key down key code dot space here we are basically checking if the player has pressed the space key or not and if so then our body 2d dot add force vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force hit save go back to unity and let's set the values for our variables move force should be 80 jump force can be 1400 now select the spring block object and let's run the game with the default values of the spring joint 2d and see its behavior before hitting play there is an error in my code that's because I spelled horizontal wrong. So I'm going to correct that. If you have spelled it the same way, then you should correct your spelling as well. And then hit save and go back to Unity. Now hit play. Now move the player around and try to hit the spring block object. So this is the default behavior of the spring joint 2D component. Let's change a few values in the rigid body 2D component and then run another test. Change the gravity scale to 9.8 and freeze the rotation on the z-axis. Now run the game. The first thing you'll notice is that the object is being dragged further down compared to before. This is of course because of the increased gravitational scale. And you'll also notice a different behavior when you hit the object. First of all, it's not rotating. And second, there's more pull on it, so it's not really going that high. Stop the game, run the game again. And now let's take a look at some of the properties of the spring joint 2D component. First of all, you have distance. Now I mentioned earlier that the spring joint 2D aims to keep a linear distance between two points. In this case, the two points are a rigid body 2D component and a point in world space. The distance that is to be maintained is decided by this distance property. And this right here is the distance marker. So if you increase or decrease the distance value, you'll see the marker moving up and down along the line. Now you must be wondering why is it that even though the distance marker is here, this object is still so much far down. This is because of the frequency. The value in this field is basically the frequency at which the spring oscillates around the distance between the two objects. The spring will oscillate with a certain frequency as it attempts to re-establish the desired distance between the objects. So currently the frequency is set to 1. Let's change this to 2. As you can see, the object automatically got pulled up. Now, with a frequency of 2, try hitting the object. You'll notice a different behavior as compared to when the frequency was 1. Now try changing the frequency to 10 and then try hitting the object. As you can see, the spring is really tight. Stop the game and now let's take a look at damping ratio. Damping ratio is basically the amount by which the spring force is reduced in proportion to the movement speed. So the higher the damping ratio, the quicker the oscillation will die down. To demonstrate this, run the game and change the frequency to 10 and then change it back to 1. As you can see, it bounces for a while before it finally comes to rest. Now change the frequency back to 10 
and change the damping ratio to 1 and now change the frequency back to 1. As you can see, there's a huge difference between the behavior previously and the behavior right now. The damping ratio can only be between 0 and 1, but it doesn't necessarily have to be 0 or 1, it can be anything in between. Alright, now let's check out some more properties. When you move this game object around, you'll notice the distance marker moves around with it as well. This is because auto configure distance is checked. When auto configure distance is checked, then the distance is calculated automatically. So when you move the game object around, the distance is automatically calculated and set over here. However, if you uncheck auto configure distance, then when you move the game object around, you'll notice that the distance does not change. You have to calculate the distance on your own and set the value here. So let's check auto configure distance and bring this back here. Change the position on the X axis to zero. Next we have anchor and connected anchor. You already know that the spring joint tries to keep a linear distance between two points. These are the two points, the anchor and the connected anchor. One thing to note is that the anchor position is in the local space of this game object. That's why it's currently set to zero on X and Y. And as you increase the value on the X axis, it's gonna move to the right. And as you decrease, it's gonna move to the left. The same goes for y. As you increase it's going to go up and as you decrease it's going to go down. Now let's set the position of the anchor to anything except center which is the default. Set the frequency to 3 and uncheck freeze rotation and now hit play. You can also try setting the damping ratio to 1 so that the movement is a little more stable and you can try setting the anchor position to something else and see what kind of behavior you're able to get. Next we have connected anchor. Now here's the thing about the connected anchor. If the connected anchor is in world space as it is right now, then the position will be calculated in world space. If you change this value, you're actually setting this value in world space. We'll get to connected rigid bodies later on. For now, we are going to test out the behavior with the connected anchor in world space. Hit play and before moving on change both of the anchor positions back to zero on all axes next let's try connecting another rigid body to the spring joint 2d earlier we had attached a rigid body 2d component to our block game object so now drag and drop the block game object into this field now as you can see the connected anchor is centered on our block game object and now when we change the connected anchor value it is in local space of this game object. So this game object's position is currently set to zero on the x-axis. So if we move it a little to the left side, as you can see, the position on the x-axis has changed. But if you go back to the spring joint 2D and take a look at the connected anchor value, it's still zero. So this shows you that the connected anchor position is now being shown in, in the local space of the connected rigid body. So if we move it around, you're going to see the value changing accordingly. Now that we have another rigid body 2D connected to this spring joint 2D, let's try moving that rigid body around and see what happens to this rigid body. Drag this a little closer and hit play. First of all, you'll notice this swinging motion, which is expected because both the anchors are not aligned. But also, if you select the block game object and move it around, you'll notice that you're sort of able to control the spring block object by moving the block object. This is because it is connected to that game object's spring joint 2D component. All right, now you'll notice that this spring block object is able to go through our block game object while it's moving around. To prevent this, you can check enable collision. Now when you run the game, it collides. Next, auto configure connected anchor. When this property is set to true, the connected anchor property will be calculated automatically to match the world position of the anchor property. And when it is false, the position of the connected anchor can be configured using the connected anchor property like we did before. So check this and you'll notice that now both the anchor and the connected anchor are in the same place. All right, before testing out this option, change the frequency back to one and now select this game object or first have the spring block selected and hit play. And now select the block game object and try moving it around. So as you can see, although the connected anchor is not in the center, its position has been calculated automatically. The block game object is still connected to the spring joint 2D. And so when you move it around, you will be affecting the movement of 
the spring block object. Finally, we have break force. This is the force that needs to be applied for this joint to break. Now, when a joint tries to constrain a rigid body 2D, it may apply a force to do so. This is known as reaction force. Each physics update, the break force is compared with the magnitude of the reaction force because the reaction force is a vector 2. And if the magnitude of the reaction force exceeds the break force, then the joint breaks. Let's test this out. Create a new script, call it spring joint script 04. Open it up in mono develop. Here type public float reaction force magnitude and private spring joint 2D spring joint 2D. In the start method add a reference to the spring joint 2D component and in the update method type reaction force magnitude equals spring joint 2D dot reaction force dot magnitude. Hit save. Go back to unity. Freeze the rotation on the z-axis so that the object doesn't spin. Set the break force to let's say 200 and also increase the size of this object so that we don't miss it while trying to hit it. Hit play and as you can see there's already a certain amount of reaction force affecting this spring joint 2D. Now try stretching this spring by hitting this object and pushing it further. As you can see the spring broke. So yeah that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen and in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.